A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, the disciples saw Jesus standing on the beach, but they couldn't see who he was. He called out, friends, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat and you'll get plenty of fish. So they did and they couldn't draw in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water and swam ashore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were out only about 300 feet. When they got there, they saw that a charcoal fire was burning, and fish were frying over it, and there was bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net had not torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. And no one dared ask him if he really was the Lord, because they were sure of it. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And once more he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. The truth is, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked and go wherever you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and others will direct you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know what kind of death he would die to glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. And may God speak to us through these verses today. I love the movie Fiddler on the Roof. Any other fans? Fiddler on the Roof is the story of the ups and downs of a family of Russian Jews. And the main character is a poor milkman named Tevya. He's married to a hardworking wife named Golda. They live in a poor village and they're trying to marry off their five daughters. Tevya and Golda have been married a long time and There's a scene in the movie where they're talking, and then they start bickering a little. And because it is a musical, pretty soon it turns into a song. Now, in the middle of arguing, Tevya suddenly looks at Golda and asks her, Do you love me? And Golda looks at him as if to say, What kind of question is that? Tevya, I cook good meals for you every day. I wash your filthy clothes. I keep the house clean for you. I take good care of you. And Tevya says, But... Do you love me? Golda says, I've helped you raise five daughters. I've struggled to make ends meet. I work hard for you. Now Tevye looks a little sad. He's waiting to hear her say it. And he asks her again, but do you love me? Golda says, we've shared our lives together day after day, all these years, sleeping in the same bed, waking up together every morning. And now Tevye's face shows he really wants to know the answer to his question. He needs to hear those words. So he asks her again, but do you love me? And by this time, Golda has begun to wonder herself how she feels about him. Each time that he asks her, she gets more uncomfortable. Until finally she turns away and she asks herself, do I love him? 
and there's a pained and worried expression on her face as if she's not sure of her answer. She thinks about it, and she examines her heart, and finally her face brightens. She knows the answer. And she turns back to Tevye and says, Yes, I love you. And they hug and kiss. You know that their relationship has grown. They've gone to a deeper level. Now, if you watch that scene, you may find yourself asking the same questions about people who love you. Do they really love me? Do I honestly love them? In one form or another, we've probably all lived through a similar scene. Moments when we are waiting to hear from someone those words, I love you. We may have heard them a million times, a kind of casual, yeah, 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 I love you, what's for dinner? Sure, I love you, where's the remote? But we may reach a point where we need to hear it with depth, with sincerity. We want our feelings to be returned. John's gospel tells us that Jesus appeared after his resurrection to seven of his disciples on the seashore at dawn. And after helping them land a huge catch of fish, Jesus cooks breakfast for them. And after their bellies are full, Jesus takes Peter aside and asks him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. A few minutes later, Jesus asks him again, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Of course, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, then take care of my sheep. And a few minutes later, Jesus asks him one more time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, Peter's feelings are hurt. Jesus doesn't seem to believe him. And Peter replies a third time, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus says, then feed my sheep. Now, this passage has been interpreted several different ways. Some believe that it was written to convince readers that Jesus made Peter the leader and gave him more authority than the others. There were power struggles in the early church, and people were following different leaders. You can read a lot of that in Paul's letters. And so perhaps this passage was part of a campaign for the Peter group. Now, others suggest that Jesus made Peter confess his love three times as a way of forgiving him for the three times that Peter denied him when Jesus was arrested. So maybe the passage is about forgiveness and restoration. Experts also like to point out that when Jesus asked the question, the Greek word for love that John uses is an expression for the highest, most perfect kind of love. But when Peter answers, John uses a word in Greek that means something more like friendship. Do you love me, Peter? Well, I really like you, Lord. You're my best friend. Now, there are some truths in all these interpretations, but it's also possible that what we have here is Jesus and Peter acting out the roles of Tevye and Golda. Each time Jesus asks Peter if he loves him, he may be forcing Peter to seriously consider what it means to love Jesus, to dig down deep inside himself, examine his own heart, and decide if it's really true. Do you love me, Peter? Sure, Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me? Uh, Well, yeah, Come on, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, what? Do you love me? Now, more than any other disciple, Peter is used in the Gospels as a symbol of the church. A church that is sometimes brave and sometimes cowardly, sometimes strong and smart, sometimes weak and bumbling. Peter is a symbol of of us, all of us. And so this passage asks us to examine our own hearts and gauge the depth of our love for Jesus. As one writer says, Jesus asks again, and you realize he is looking deep into your soul. 
and you begin to see the point. It is not a matter of your beliefs or doctrines. It is not about that Christian churchy part of life. Jesus did not ask Peter whether he was willing to devote some time or money to him. But rather, this is a matter of the heart. It is a matter of who you are and to whom your heart belongs. It is a matter of what is most important to you. More than anything else, it is the depth of our love for Jesus that determines the passion with which we will serve him. Now, as he almost always does, Jesus summons each of us to enter into a more meaningful and committed relationship with him, a relationship that begins and ends in love. But then that loving relationship is meant to be expressed in service. If we love Jesus, then we too must tend the sheep. Now, in some ways, this story should give us a kind of a sense of deja vu. It is more or less a reworking of that time that Jesus first called Peter and the disciples. You might remember on that first occasion, they had been fishing all night, nothing to show for it. Jesus told them, cast your nets out into the deeper water, and they landed a huge catch of fish. They were amazed, and Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Well, here we are again, only this time it is after the resurrection. But it seems that the only thing the disciples can think to do after an event like that is just go back to fishing. They go back to their regular routines. They go back to their ordinary habits, and things don't really seem very different for them. Almost as if, The resurrection never made much of a difference to them. We are told this is the third time Jesus appeared to them. What have they been doing in the meantime? Why don't their lives seem changed? Maybe the excitement, the passion they felt, maybe that's worn off. They're even still fishing in the wrong places. But when Jesus shows up, he doesn't yell at them, hey, Didn't I send you all out on some mission for me? Fishers of people, remember? Maybe I picked the wrong bunch of disciples. No, he doesn't do that. He gives them another fishing lesson. And he fixes them breakfast. He shares yet another meal with them. And he gently, patiently reminds them why he called them in the first place. To follow him. Now for us here today, Easter with its promises of forgiveness and new life, it's in the past again. But do we live as if those promises have happened? Do our lives seem changed by the Easter message? Or are we back to the same old routines? Maybe fishing in the wrong places and forgetting to tend the sheep. But just as Jesus kept coming back to the disciples, he keeps He keeps coming back to us, too. He keeps coming again and again. I think he comes hoping to find us living as if Easter happened. And then it means something to us. Hoping that we love him enough to do what he asks us to do. Not angry, but gentle, patient, reminding us of our first call. Reminding us of his love for us and to invite us once again to follow him. Amen.